Kaplan, and welcome back to Heidelberg Football Halftime Show here on WHEI TV 10. We'd like to give a special thanks to the Berg News crew for uh, doing that special edition report. Yep. Dan and I both uh, obviously got that done, so that was pretty cool. But I'm Jimmy Flint here alongside Dan and Scott. How are you guys? Good to be here. The vibe on campus is good. It's been exciting. We got a game that uh, can get out of hand, but I think Berg can bring it back. Yeah, uh, they, the field is packed. The hill up above the field is packed. Yes. There is no... There's base, There's almost no breathing room down there. That's how many people are down there. It's in, it's insane. Yeah, it's, it's cool to see the atmosphere and see the Heidelberg community come together. But right now, let's talk about the football game. Mount Union coming out to a dominating start, looking like the defending national champion that they are, and they're out to a 30-13 to 13 lead. Let's start, with, uh, let's start with you, Scott. Let's look at some of the team statistics. What are we looking at? Rushing yards, passing yards, et cetera. The statistics would point at that Mount Union is dominating us in every aspect of this game. When you look at first downs rushing, we've got eight for Mount Union, and you contribute a lot of that to Kevin Burke right. and how dynamic he has been in the pocket versus two for Heidelberg, and you can contribute that to the lack of uh, diversity in the play calling and just really Cartel Brooks not getting much mm -hmm. help from his line. Mm -hmm. um, passing, we've got five uh, first downs for Mount Union, only two for Heidelberg, so beating us in both aspects of how you move the ball um, downfield. Heidelberg does have one turnover, but uh, a stat that isn't on here that is, was the key to Mount Union having this big of a lead at halftime was that fake punt that went into that, 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 about a yeah. 40 yard run. Well, you know, Scott, you can always point to one play or another play in football, and really, you know, I noticed that this a lot in this game. One play really changes the complexion of the game. I mean, Absolutely. you can also point on the other side, Mount Union could have blown this thing open before then when the, on the screen play, the pick six dropped by that defensive back. Right. If, he, if he holds on to that, it's 24 to 7 or something like that at that time. And I don't think Heidelberg ever looks back from that if, if they make that play. Now, Heidelberg ended up coming back, making it, I believe, a 17 to 13 game with about eight minutes to go in the second quarter mm -hmm. but I, I just I think what you said when it comes down to the play calling on offense it's a little bit that but I think it's more just Mount Union taking away Cartel Brooks and making Mike Meese beat you they've definitely done their job or there was watching tape or training for it to attack Cartel Brooks because they know how dynamic he mm -hmm. is and he's mm -hmm. coming off of a, a shat record shattering game against Otterbein um, him being a key aspect of our team They've definitely done their job when you tip your cap to do it. Although I do think that a little help with a little more play calling, maybe Brooks going out for some more short screens as mm -hmm. we talked about in the pregame, would right. help how Brooks is rushing the yeah. ball. Right. I, I think as, as far as the running game goes, and I'll get you in on this, Dan, I, I just feel like it doesn't matter if you put Carlos Hyde out there or Chris, you know, any, any right. talented running back, th mm -hmm. there's two or three defensive guys in the backfield immediately as soon as Cartel Brooks gets the ball. Right. So, Dan, what's your thoughts on that? And then give me some of the individual stats. Who's standing out today? Um, I'm thinking the right side of the line's looking kind of weak. That's where they seem to be running the ball a lot. Um, the right tackle, obviously, is the, uh, the run-blocking tackle. So they, he has to do his job a little better. Um, so that way the defensive ends and the linebackers out there can't get to the mm -hmm. running back. Um, surprisingly, Mike Meese is actually the leading rusher right now. Yeah. He has six rushes for 24 yards. Cartel Brooks only has one yard on 11 carries, which is surprising because at this point and in, in any other occasion, he would have almost, I'd say, 75, 80 yards. Yeah, I mean, he came into this game averaging 7.9, and now he's right. averaging less than a yard of carry. And that's that stifling Mount Union that's defense like we talked yeah, about. Yeah, you know what? Yard the, the amazing thing about this is Heidelberg, they scored 13 at halftime, and that's more than Mount Union gives up on average in a game right, already. Right. But the thing is, is that Heidelberg's defense, even though they've shown flashes of being able to, to play well, I've just seen a complete dominance in the trenches from Mount Union. And, I mean, I'm going to ask you guys what your prediction is moving into the second half. But first, what, what I'm thinking is that they're just going to continue to, to wear Heidelberg down, unfortunately. I, I think so, to some what you're right. It was a big momentum getter for us to get Burke down twice before they were looking to score in that next minute and a half they had the chance to. Mm -hmm. Big momentum getter to get Burke down twice that proves that we can do it. And if you contain Burke, there goes their offense. Right. They don't have a rusher like we have in Cartel Brooks. Their receivers match up with ours. Bro Burke is their offense. Exactly. And so you get him down and you have a game. All you got to do is have some defensive stops. We got to move the ball on offense a lot better. Right. Uh, and that might force Meese to move around the pocket a little bit more mm -hmm. and give his receivers a little bit more time to get open. Well, right. Dan, the play calling is going to change for Heidelberg in the second oh, half. Sure. Coming in down three scores, they're going to have to really step up and, and probably be more 
be less predictable in their play calling. Right. Dan, give me some of the individual stats, though. Uh, what's Meese doing through the air? All right. Well, Meese is uh, 6 for 14, uh, below 50%. He has one touchdown and 107 yards passing. This is not a typical game for Mike Meese. You know, he is kind of not playing the way he should. He's holding on to the ball a little longer than he used or is supposed to be. And we talked about this yep. when they played at Capital at home, I believe it was. So, um, and then Mike Meese, like I said, has got 24 yards. Dante Dye has 77 yards receiving. Um, and Cameron Vokey has the only uh, receiving touchdown for Heidelberg. Well, so pretty interesting. Well, we're going to have to send it back to the field for the second half. But before we do that, both of you, uh, prediction for the end of the game. Go ahead and make an amendment. Quick prediction. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay on the positive note. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that Heidelberg pulls it off. I'm going to say they hold it at 30. I like the momentum against Burke. I'm going to say Heidelberg because I have to. I'm going to go 45-42 Heidelberg. Okay. That's a good score. We'll see how it goes in the second half. Thanks for watching the WHEI TV 10 halftime show, and good luck to both teams in the second half. We'll see you next time. Whoa!